July 1st, 2025. As humanity welcomed its third confirmed interstellar traveler, 3i Atlas, observatories across China stunned the scientific community with breathtaking new images revealing unprecedented details, just as major Western telescopes mysteriously went offline. Some astronomers argue that the timing of these blackouts raises serious concerns about Earth's ability to respond to cosmic hazards when critical data streams risk being lost, with speculation mounting over rotation irregularities and its strange path through space. The story of 3i Atlas has become far more than just scientific curiosity. It's turning into a global test of cooperation, transparency, and planetary defense. Ready defense, ready defense, ready defense, ready defense, ready defense, ready of users, ready defense, ready of Thresh, and planetary defense, ready. The question now is, what do these new images truly reveal about this enigmatic visitor? And why has their release sparked such controversy among experts and the public? The official discovery announcement for 3i Atlas reached international outlets on July 1st, 2025. The Atlas survey team, operating from observatories in Hawaii and Chile, identified a faint, swiftly moving object with a trajectory that didn't match anything within our solar system. Within hours, its hyperbolic orbit and extreme inbound velocity confirmed what astronomers quietly suspected. This was only the third interstellar object ever detected. The designation 3i was added to the Minor Planet Center's database before dawn in Europe, and by midday, forums and research channels were buzzing. The same questions that once followed Oumuamua and Borisov resurfaced. Where did it originate, and what is it made of? Yet this time, rumors circulated even faster. Social media lit up with claims about an erratic spin or tumbling motion, along with reports that its projected path wasn't following predictions. Amateur researchers began analyzing early light curves, comparing them to previous interstellar visitors, hunting for oddities or recurring patterns. The rarity of such events amplified the excitement. Only two objects like this had ever been confirmed, and each discovery represented a turning point in astronomical research. The last instance was Borisov in 2019, preceded by Oumuamua's cigar-like form in 2017, whose peculiarities still provoke debate today. Now, in 2025, the world once again found itself staring skyward at another mysterious messenger. The initial data from the Atlas team listed key values, an inbound speed of over 60 kilometers per second, a close solar pass expected in late October, and an estimated nucleus size between 30 and 50 kilometers, massively larger than Oumuamua, and notably surrounded by a visible coma. That detail alone ignited fresh interest. Unlike the rocky Oumuamua or the icy Borisov, 3i Atlas appeared to blur those categories, perhaps combining both qualities. As awareness spread, every observation minute became vital. Online astronomy groups reported a rush for telescope scheduling, data sharing routines, and strategies to track this transient target before it slipped from view. However, in the background, another story gained traction. Several major Western observatories allegedly entered maintenance mode just as 3i Atlas reached peak observability. Whether coincidence or something else, the timing stirred speculation. One fact remained clear. This wasn't just another find in the cosmic catalog. It was a worldwide spectacle driven by urgency, intrigue, and the fleeting nature of opportunity. For a fast-moving interstellar object like 3i Atlas, Every hour after discovery counts. Traveling at over 60 kilometers per second, its observation window spans days, sometimes mere hours. Astronomers race to gather high cadence data, rapid image sequences, and spectral readings, capturing each flicker of light, every burst of gas, or subtle change in brightness. These snapshots help reveal rotation rates and irregular movement. Early chatter about a tumbling nucleus made this data even more critical. If the object spins erratically or has uneven surface patches, the light curve exposes those characteristics first. Some scientists speculated a rotation period exceeding 12 hours with hints of a complex, non-principal axis spin. Such motion could signal a past collision, a loosely held structure, 
or possibly a binary core, each scenario offering insights into its origins and physical makeup. Yet speed measurement isn't the entire story. Rapid spectroscopy, breaking the light into chemical components, can uncover emissions of carbon monoxide, water vapor, or uncommon molecules from the surface. These eruptions vanish quickly, sometimes in under an hour, as sunlight heats fresh ice. Missing a single event could mean losing vital evidence of such volatile reactions. If a jet fires asymmetrically, it can even alter the comet's path by measurable degrees, making the object a live example of interstellar physics. Similar accelerations were noted in the trajectories of both Oumuamua and Borisov, and now perhaps, in 3i Atlas, Atlas, Ein 3 Atlas, Atlas 2 Tuta to Wells, Atlas 7 to 13, Atlas C3. The significance of these observations goes beyond curiosity. Each interstellar object provides a rare, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to test planetary formation theories across star systems. If 3i Atlas indeed exhibits hybrid features, both rocky and icy, or if its coma behaves unlike any comet we've recorded, then the earliest captured data might reshape scientific thinking. Some theorists even propose that transitional bodies like this could bridge the gap between solid planetesimals and icy long-period comets, an idea testable only through early, high-cadence, multi-wavelength observations. That's why astronomers emphasize the stakes, a few crucial nights, torrents of data, and the possibility of uncovering answers to questions that have persisted since the first interstellar visitor was found. If captured correctly through rotational readings, jet compositions, and minute orbital shifts, this evidence might redefine our understanding of how other solar systems build their worlds. But if that narrow window closes, the chance disappears forever. The Cake Observatory's engineering notes for the 2025 semester resemble a record of missed opportunities. DIMOS, the primary instrument for faint object spectroscopy, remained offline from late May through the semester's end due to a detector replacement. NERSPEC, the near-infrared spectrograph, shut down for five weeks beginning May 6th. By the time 3i Atlas moved into visibility, nearly all of KEK's main instruments were out of commission. Even the adaptive optic system on KK2 suffered from shutter malfunctions, extending the downtime for both spectral and visual observations. These weren't routine interruptions. They coincided precisely with the critical observation window when astronomers needed maximum sky coverage. Twilight cadence programs continued, squeezing in whatever limited observations were possible, though the regular rhythm was disrupted. Remote observing protocols, a critical fallback that had sustained operations during the pandemic, still function, but only for instruments not previously deactivated. Researchers specializing in time domain events, reliant on target of opportunity overrides to capture fleeting phenomena, saw their chances to observe 3i Atlas vanish. Keck thus lost any possibility to record high-resolution spectra or rapid photometric sequences. Official scheduling notices and instrument status documentation confirmed the situation. No data acquisition, no override activations, merely a long list of canceled observing nights. Gemini Observatory, operating from twin facilities in Hawaii and Chile, battled its own challenges. The cyber attack in August 2023 that crippled both sites was old news, yet its effects carried into the following year. Security-driven software upgrades ended up restricting access to the multi-object spectrograph precisely when the interstellar visitor brightened. Internal Gemini records reveal a last-minute race to rearrange schedules. As one astronomer reported, window lost. Object already passed optimal brightness. System logs captured a clear dip in responsiveness. Urgent follow-up requests failed or bounced, some remaining unfulfilled. Problems like hardware hibernation, shutter faults, or conflicting software are common in observatory operations, but their convergence across Cake and Gemini during 3i Atlas's brief passage felt like more than coincidence. Scheduler amendments, facility updates, and technical reports together confirmed a very real data void. For astronomers, every missed night represented an incomplete light curve, 
a missing segment of spectral data, a lost chance to study a rare interstellar visitor before it vanished. Technical teams at both facilities spent those critical weeks prioritizing repairs while fielding urgent appeals from observing groups. Some repairs came just after the object moved out of range. Others, such as Cake's adaptive optics overhaul, were simply too extensive to rush. As the observation window closed, the truth became clear. The observatories built to capture cosmic rarities had been sidelined by their own complexity. The holes left in the record would influence how the story of 3 I Atlas was told. Official responses followed quickly after the maintenance note, note after the maintenance note, note nets note, notes and ads, note sound. Official responses followed quickly after the maintenance note. Set in gay is the note snakes, drains and sodas, veins of seven inches note, not of confrions. Official responses followed quickly. The National Science Foundation described the disruptions at Cake and Gemini as standard upgrade periods and safety lock blackout intervals. The European Southern Observatory blamed a regional power fluctuation, claiming the outage was beyond its control. NASA, questioned about the absence of Mars reconnaissance orbiter imagery, referenced the ongoing government shutdown and imaging backlog. Yet despite these formal explanations, many astronomers were unsettled. Three premier observatories, running independently, had all gone down during the same critical time frame. Statistically improbable, but not impossible, it nonetheless struck many as strange. A few engineers publicly remarked that the simultaneous failures were abnormal, suggesting overlapping. Weaknesses in scheduling or infrastructure unlikely to occur without a system-wide trigger, possibly a chain reaction from shared software or network interruptions. Others familiar with observatory operations dismissed the notion, arguing that such coincidences arise naturally from the constant strain of maintaining advanced telescopes under tight budgets. Overlapping maintenance windows, hardware breakdowns, and sheer misfortune are part of the scientific routine. This tension spilled into the global astronomy community. Some saw it as nothing more than an extraordinary run of bad timing. Others began trying to quantify the odds of three leading observatories experiencing outages during a once-in-a-decade event. The math was uncertain, too many systems, too many unknown variables, but the frustration was tangible. Losing observation time for an interstellar object isn't merely missing a night's data. For some, it ends multi-year research efforts or erases potential breakthroughs. NASA's note about delays in its high-resolution camera program fueled irritation. Continued government shutdowns had frozen image processing and delayed public data releases, cutting off another vital source of information. Without those images, no replacement data could close the gap, not even the most capable amateur telescopes. Astronomers dependent on real-time images for measuring jet activity, rotation, or bursts were left refreshing data feeds, waiting vainly for updates. All of this bred further speculation online and within scientific circles alike. Some suggested the blackout sequence reflected heightened security, stringent data validation, or caution surrounding an unexpected discovery. Others refused to read into it, calling it typical turbulence magnified by an extraordinary event. In any case, the outcome was identical a measurable void in the world's observational record, and a narrative now shaped by the limited data that survived. File headers and dataset identifiers from archives revealed their own pattern. Every publicly available record, from the Minor Planet Center, NASA's MAST platform, and the ESO data portal, showed 3i Atlas observations with standard providence files documenting the initial detection through subsequent tracking all originated from Western observatories. Timestamps, exposure metadata, and observer credits matched consistently. There was no indication of data contributions from China, no entries from Yunnan, Xinglong, Purple Mountain, or any other domestic site. Searches across Chinese platforms like Weibo, Jihu, and official WeChat feeds turned up zero results involving 3i Atlas datasets. 
Likewise, global repositories listed no Chinese DOIs or datasets. Instead, every log pointed back toward Atlas, VLT, Gemini, Hubble, and TESS. Even after checking correlated metadata, the provenance trail remained entirely consistent.